All right. Uh, I was asked to uh, do this uh, for somebody uh, back east. But I'm going to do this, uh, put on YouTube, so that uh, uh, you can see some of the things that uh, are kind of hard to, to learn because you're watching somebody. And uh, I'll go over the tuning and doing the other stuff. But right now I'm going to jam a little bit. Then I'm going to show you exactly what I was doing and why I was doing it and why the sound is... Uh, coming the way it does. So I'm going to start with some just basics, basic tumbao. Um, left and right tumbao, then um, a guajita type tumbao added. So here we go. I'll try to explain a little bit. Maybe you couldn't hit the volume wasn't right. I was trying to hit them louder so you could hear. But basically what's going on is you have your basic tones that you uh, learn. First, about turning the two, the, 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 the congas. Uh, basically, you have your, your quinto or your segundo or conga. And then you have your tumba, which is your low. Low, medium, and high. Um, the great percussionist, Richie Gajete Garcia, he, gives a, he has wonderful... Uh, tapes on, on Latin percussion, but basically he says uh, you tune these to a fourth, um, and he uses a mnemonic anchor, a great mnemonic anchor, or memory anchor, if you will, um, by saying, here comes the bride, which is a fourth, which is, um, and again, this would be probably a half step in between these three, but um, if, if once you play with different bands, I played with a jazz band, the trumpeter, uh, didn't like uh, the way I, I had it, this one tuned because it was interfering. I played trumpet also, so I understood what he was talking about. But I, it was it was interfering. It was causing a wobble effect with his his tone. So I turned tuned this down uh, or up or down, and uh, and I left these as they were, um, and it still worked out fine. I could have tuned these down also, but I didn't. But it worked out fine. So you'll find that as you play, you'll have to adjust according to the band you're playing with, but basically, um, when you're learning the tumbao, um, there's different forms of it, um, fast, slow, of course, but uh, some people say you have to have eight beats, ghost notes, but what happens is, when you play the, the tumbao, no one's going to hear your ghost notes unless you're slapping, so basically, as long as you're going, boom, 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 with that, and you keep that rhythm, you'll be okay. So um, whether you put eight ghost notes or eight slaps or two slaps or heel, finger, toe, um, it, it's all up to you. As long as you keep the beat, you'll be all right. 
And of course, if you add the, the next, uh, the wall and coat type uh, uh, beat or guajira type where you go. Okay, that, that, you flip that in where it's appropriate. Um, again, uh, if you play with a jazz group, you'll probably have heard this beat before. That was done by a uh, first person that I am aware of was uh, that I learned from watching another video, another great percussionist. Uh, but anyway, he basically says that they came from uh, Chano Pozo, a Cuban, um, who played with Dizzy Gillespie. He adapted the the tumbao. Basically, it's a tumbao, but adapted to uh, a jazz a jazz kind kind of beat. And the other thing I'm doing I'm doing I do is. You see a lot of guys with a fast heel toe pattern, very fast. They're, they're real quick. I'm not as quick as they are. So what I do, it's cheating, if you will, but if you practice hitting two beats, or yeah, two beats extra in your heel toe pattern, <laughs> it'll sound like you're going real fast when you're doing like. Uh, terms of uh, the queen, uh, queen of England doing her, her, her wave, that's all you're doing, going this way, down on the, on the conga head. But then you add your repertoire. So basically you have your open tone, you have your Roomba slap, you have your slap with the uh, single hand, you have your bass tone, and I don't know if, can, if it, the camera's picking it up, but so it's really an ex self-expression, so once you learn all your, your open tones and your slaps, and uh, your, your heel toe patterns, your side patterns, self-expression. Again, when you play with a group, depending on the group you're playing, they're playing Latin, Latin music or they're playing uh, salsa music or they're playing uh, uh, jazz, you just adapt accordingly and just go with the beat, okay? So, oh, anyway, uh, the way I practice sometimes, I'm at home, I get a phone book and I wrap, uh, I use some martial arts also, by the way. And all these things are, <laughs> can be applied uh, into martial arts as far as uh, hand sensitivity goes. And, and learning your, your, your beats and so forth within the arts. But this phone book is also used, I use in martial arts, but it's also very handy. When I'm watching TV, I got my feet up. I have, I practice all my patterns, just with my feet up. Practice my patterns. And if a commercial comes on with music, it, it leads to uh, finding new ways to use your percussion instruments. So, so, when you're practicing at home, you can go slow. See, I'm adding the double beats on the heel, heel toe patterns. I'm adding two more, two more toes. And then you just speed it up. So that's how you practice. So anyway, um, I hope that answers the questions for you, uh, you guys back east. And um, for a couple of guys that asked me back here on the west coast. So anyway, um, keep practicing and have fun. And I'll be adding another tamale um, video where I show uh, the relationship between the sticks that I practice martial arts with, Filipino martial arts, and uh, the hand sensitivity drills that we do there with the sticks. It applies with the congas, and it applies with the timbales. Effortless hitting, and effortless hitting here. Just relax. <laughs> 